Hi, so I've decided that since these are such different content to the regular vlogs, I'm gonna start doing them as different videos. It doesn't make any sense to have it as one long thing, and it makes the vlog too long. Um, and that being said, let me introduce you to the beautiful Amalia. So, I'm originally from Romania, but we met in England, because I've been living in Ling England for many years now, probably 11, 12 years, and we're both teaching, right, uh, over summer. So, that's how we met each other. Yep. And now you are in? South Korea. Yeah, great. Um, and how long have you been there? Uh, just over half a year now. So I'm into my second semester of my exchange year abroad. The UK and South Korea were pretty much on track with each other at first, coronavirus wise, mm -hmm. right? Like we had the first cases at the same time. Um, but when did you notice that the responses were different? Obviously, because geographically we're so much closer to China and everything that started off. Um, I guess I could see that people were beginning to be a bit more cautious with how they were acting with their everyday, li everyday lives. Um, uh, but actually for me, it was interesting because I traveled to Singapore when everything had started becoming serious here in South Korea. So I kind of missed the big bulk of everything changing, but I knew stuff was beginning to happen um, and nothing was happening in England. Like it wasn't even... A thing at that time. Oh. It originally just started with um, not really social distancing but just being aware of what was going on um, and then when things started becoming serious um, I know it well when I was here it never got to the point where um, like everything has shut down um, and we were stuck in our houses or anything like that but that is because I was in Seoul. What's different about South Korea is that um, they managed to contain cases quite well because a lot of it was in, I think, two other major cities here in South Korea, um, Daegu, and I can't remember the name of the other one, but they contained those cities so well and they didn't allow people to go out or in and they really put in a lot of money to keep everything under control and so that meant that us here in the capital we didn't have such a big issue as to what you guys are now having in England. They didn't let anyone go in or out of the cities and people were okay with that? Did they complain about it? Did they think it was an overreaction? No absolutely not. I think that's a major difference I've noticed. It's the public reaction to everything and um, I think even regarding with wearing masks, like I have I have a bunch of masks here just laying around on my desk so they're ready to be used and thrown away. But um, we, I think as a community, Koreans, everyone cares about each other and they're really respectful um, in regards to things like that. So I think straight away everyone was like, okay, we need to protect the society and the community. So everyone just do your thing, don't go out respect the rules and I think that really helped with with keeping it under control so mm -hmm. yeah I think we started taking it seriously around let's say middle of February mm -hmm. I want to say um and then yeah there was a lot of cases from the two big cities and uh, most of the cases were concerned with one of the churches, cults sort of thing. And the problem was a lot of people didn't give their um, their information, like um, who they were and names, where they lived, stuff like that. They were, it's kind of a secret cult and people don't like to share. So I think at one point there was still uh, like... Uh, a thousand people that were still not identified and obviously you need that information to track them down and um, make sure that they're put under self-quarantine um, eventually yeah that led to the closure of the the big cities um, and then other people went into um, self-quarantine self-isolations um, and then so in middle of March or end of March, we started feeling it more here as well, in the capital. 
um, and they did the social distancing until this weekend. Um, but like I mentioned it to you here, it's not to the point where things have completely shut down. Um, we're still able to just walk down the streets perfectly fine. Um, so what businesses are closed and what, what were closed and what was open at the like height of it? And how about now? So the main things that were closed were literally uh, clubs, bars, social places, let's say. Social places. Um you still had the big and like um, museums and touristy areas, but you still had the big palaces, for example, you could still go into it. You just have hand sanitizer everywhere, like in the bus, every building you enter by the entrance, you have hand sanitizer um, anywhere. You can find hand sanitizer perfectly easy. Um, and of course, they try to um, encourage you to stay away from people. So even if you want to go sit on a bench in a park, uh, for example, you you know you have those like wooden tables and benches. You have they've put like posters with a big red X on one corner, so only one person can sit. And then across, they have one X on that corner, and a person can sit there. I can't say a lot of things did shut down. I really can't say they did. Not here. Not in the capital. Yeah. I think we didn't have to shut everything down because people really respected um, self-isolation and people just stopped going out. Like, mm -hmm. So the government didn't have to take any other precautions because people just realized, yeah, okay, this is serious. We're going to stay in. Um, yeah. Even the subway, if you'd go on, there would be like one or two other people um, and that, that was it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so they didn't have to enforce it. They just, they just told people. Yeah, people respect the government and they really trust it. Yep. And it turns out they were right to. <laughs> yep. In the epicenters, in the places where it's like being very severely hit, what kind of restrictions do they have? I don't know enough detail to tell you, to be honest, but um, from the videos I was seeing, everything was just shut down. Everyone was just in their own houses. Um, I don't even know if they were able to maybe go out for like one hour to grab essentials if needed or if people had things delivered to their places can't really tell you but it's it's definitely like i imagine it as how we were seeing those videos from from china where those areas were really badly affected mm -hmm. they really tried to contain it as much as possible and even people that um that knew they had recently been to those cities they just turned themselves in like they had to be honest about it and they were they didn't see a reason not to and um they were able to be uh put under quarantine so that they prevent any spread the korean people that you've spoken to do they feel like they're doing a good job i think so i think everyone's happy with the way things are being um, kept under control but I know at first um, there were some issues regarding the the president they felt that he hadn't uh, he hadn't closed the borders fast enough for the travel between China and South Korea so I think they were blaming him for the the spread and allowing the virus to get into the country um, but I think now the government has really kicked in and they're honestly, from my point of view, they're trying their best and they're, they're really doing a good job with everything that they're doing. I mean, I want to continue staying in this country. You know, I don't want to leave. I feel so safe. Yeah. When you get the like official numbers of cases and everything, mm -hmm. do people trust that? Do you think it's being honestly reported? The, the best? So I think personally, I think Korea is probably one of the countries that's really truly being honest about these numbers and i saw an interview um, by the health minister here and she was saying how they've managed to keep everything under control by being honest with the public and um being open about everything because if the public knows what's truly happening then of course they're going to take everything seriously and they're going to try to solve this problem as well you know um i think that's that is key yeah, because I also think part of obedience is trust, right? Like, Absolutely. people here we have like the supermarket, like the supermarkets were being emptied and everything, and everyone was panicking. So, was it the same? 
Absolutely not. Actually, at any point did I ever need anything, I could very easily just walk to my nearest supermarket or convenience store and I'd find anything I wanted. Like, people didn't go crazy, they didn't stock up on things. The only shortage we had was masks because we all wanted to protect each other, basically. So we all wanted to wear our masks. But even then, we could still go to the pharmacy um, once a week. I think Koreans could go to the pharmacy and get two masks per week. Um, Mm -hmm. Unfortunately for us foreigners, we couldn't. We had to find other ways of finding masks, but um, we, we, we managed. Um, but yeah, no, there was never any short shortage of anything. It was people were just being calm and listening to what the government were telling us to do. What sort of restrictions are you under now? I think I've noticed there's a big division between people that are literally not going outside the house at all, only for essentials. Mm-hmm. And there's people who are starting to just have more of a normal life, if anything, like things are slowly opening up. Obviously, you don't have the the clubs or the bars or stuff like that being opened. But um, like I've noticed now in parks, because the weather's nice, people are slowly starting to go out. Um, the difference is we're still all being really careful with what we're doing. So I guess we're all just trying to be careful, but continuing to have a good life. So even though you had the same case at the first time as the UK, you've already got the stage of relaxing. Yeah. absolutely absolutely so i think right now in seoul there's only around 600 cases if i'm not wrong um mm-hmm. 600 and something but um as soon as um like you have symptoms or something there is different phone numbers we can call there's applications as well that we can um have and we can track our symptoms and everything down but also i've noticed is that um so I told you my parents recently actually managed to visit me, uh, which I was shocked. But actually, they traveled. You know how Boris did the whole lockdown? Uh, yeah. It was the night my parents had literally just left the country. So I had a phone call from one of our friends in England. And she was like, Amalia, I don't want to scare you, but I think your parents have to come back. And I was like, what do you mean? They haven't even arrived here. Um, and it. I was so impressed as to how the Koreans have responded to this because as soon as my parents landed, they got taken away into um, this coach, I should call it, yes. Um, Police took them there and then they were put like quite far apart from each other into this coach and then they got taken to this facility two hours away from Seoul. Um, and they got, uh, given food, they got given accommodation for free. And in the morning at like seven in the morning, they got tested and waited to get the results that same day at around, uh, 3 PM, 4 PM. And then, uh, once everything was done and they were cleared, they got taken back to the airport and I could go get, pick them up from there. And instantly I was like, wow, I don't think I would be able to see that in England. So... Uh, definitely not university they emailed me a couple of times uh at first it was more of a we know the situation is because first it started getting a bit crazy here before it went crazy in england so they were like um we can support you if you want to come back we'll pay for your flights and everything and i was like "Mm, i'll test the waters see how everything is i don't want to go just yet and then um a lot of people did leave um and eventually we started getting more and more emails. And the last one, it was kind of a, you have to come back home now. And all mm-hmm. of us started panicking because we we're like, wait, why would we come back to England when you guys are reaching your peak point? And here we're already so, so much more safer than uh, it was, get on the plane and like get back to your homes. It was too much, like putting ourselves under so much potential I don't even want to think about it, but um, yeah, eventually they realized and they emailed us the the next day and they were like, actually, we've spoken to the insurance company and everything should be fine. You should be able to stay if you want to. So I was like, of course, I'm, I'm going to continue staying here. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's a completely different story to the other two main cities that really got hit by the by the coronavirus. But here I, we, we really had it light, to be honest. Yeah, because it seems strange here to me that like, 
I'm under the same restrictions that people in London are under. And like, I live in a village. There's no reason for me to not leave my house. Like, it, yeah, people like live in the countryside and they can walk for two hours without seeing anyone. And people are t- telling them to stay at home. Like, what's the benefit mm-hmm. of that? Right, right. Yeah. Do you know anyone who's had the virus? Personally, no, I don't. No. Lucky enough to say that I don't. I know there's, um, in my area, there's, I think, about 30 confirmed cases at the moment, but not that I personally know. Um, um, how do you, how would you go about confirming a case? Because, like, here you basically have to be in hospital before they'll mm-hmm. test you. But, so do you think that the amount of cases that's being reported is a true number? Um, yeah, I think so. I They encourage us here, even my university, um, when I moved into my dormitory for this semester, they made me um, sign a contract sort of thing saying that I will um, instantly um, say that I have any sort of symptom, whether it's, I don't know, a, a little cough or a bit of fever or something. Um, they really encourage us to um, be forward about it. And if anything, we need to contact the local health center. And then um, depending on what they will tell us to do, they want us to to just get tested. Like I said, it's so, it's so accessible and we get the results really quickly. So it's it's better to, to be safe than sorry. Yeah. So, yeah. But, of course, if I don't have terrible symptoms, then I'm not sure whether they would take me in or not. I'm really not sure. However, I do know that tests are very easily accessible here. You can just go into any hospital and they will um, get you right to it. They're very good with that. Do you have to pay for them? No. Everything is free. Completely free. I actually just recently uh, saw a video on Facebook, I think it was, of a Korean guy who returned from Dubai, maybe. And he, so he arrived here, he got taken to the usual quarantine place, got, um, but because he had his own place, he could then return to his own house in quarantine. And then the next day, he was meant to go with his own car to the closest hospital and get tested but he didn't have one so they sent an ambulance for him and right and then he got tested got the results the next day he was negative but he had been given like a little package from that hospital with uh, different bin bags that he had to use and once everything was um done the the two weeks away in quarantine he would have to have to put everything into a big old thing and then uh leave it outside his house and then the government would take care of it and dispose of it adequately and i think i'm I'm just baffled as to how the government is taking care of this in like such a good manner honestly it's they're yeah. really doing their best like an argument people here use is that the reason like we could not use that we couldn't use that same system because we're so we're such a different culture and korean people are more kind of obedient um or whatever do you think that that's true or do you think that it is a system that could work here i think to be honest obedience does play a big role in it because if people are not going to respect the rules and they're just gonna all continue carrying on with their lives then it's just going to spread so quickly that the government isn't even going to be able to do anything about it at that point so it's just a matter of if we all work together through this, mm-hmm. then yes, the government can take those precautions and get rid of this virus as quickly as possible. <laughs> the, the, we also have to take into consideration, though, the fact that I think they had such a good system, like health system, prior to this anyway, Korea. I think they're really well developed in that sort of sense. And... I I mean, I don't know enough to say this, but to me, it seems like maybe the NHS wasn't that strong to begin with. It was lacking lacking funds. It was lacking the, the personnel. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's different situations for each country. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of shocks me as well. Like, I realise now how many um, British people see the whole of Asia as if it was like the third world and underdeveloped yeah. and stuff. It's like, 
that in their mind, even places like Japan and South Korea and Singapore must be less developed than England. And it's it's crazy. But at least this will give them a chance to to see that that's not the case. If anything, I'm I'm even worried about. Uh, my mother is a nurse, so she obviously goes to hospital for work um even though she's not on the front line if i should say i'm still worried about her because of the lack of like proper protection for them and just the preparation and everything that i'm seeing on the news and stuff about england i'm just a bit like okay i think i mean i heard that uh, south korea they're trying to to help other countries by sending different like masks and materials and stuff like that so i hope I, the whole world just needs to come together at this point and try to solve this. We, we've been talking about this, the um, foreigners um, here, we've been talking about how we kind of wish that uh, people from Europe or America or Africa, they'll maybe start thinking about how m using masks, even for common colds and thinking about the people around you and protecting them um might come in handy you know in the future so i kind of want to see more masks being used in in our country in the future if that'll be possible by the way if you're interested in being in a video let me know i'm always interested to hear what people have to say um also if there's any questions that you think i'm not asking put them in the comments and i'll ask the next person thank you and see you next time